Seeing into the future live. This is Rackspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Skoll. Hey, I'm Robert Scoble, and we're here at TechCrunch Disrupt 2013, meeting a whole bunch of innovators. We've set up a whole bunch of inter interviews with people building uh, innovative things in the wearable space, and talking about the future of the world, the contextual future of the world. And uh, today we have a special uh, uh, guest called NS NZN Labs, there you go. which uh, does a really cool sports activity monitor that we're going to hear all about right now. So, who are you? I'm Richard Zinn. And I'm the CTO and the co-founder of the company. Very cool. And who are you? I'm Michael Ford. I'm also a co-founder with Richard, and I'm the president of the company. Yeah, so tell me what you guys are doing. Yeah, so Lit is a 24-7 activity tracker focused on people that love to participate in action-oriented sports. So surfing, snowboarding, mountain biking, those types of sports. Uh, what we found was that there's a lot of great products that have been introduced in the activity tracker segment, the Fuel Band, the Fitbit, yeah. et cetera. Um, they really got people interested in, in wearable tech, and for a sector of kind of the wellness side of it, they've done really, really well at getting people active. Yeah. But for folks that are already active, um, we find that they just don't use the product as much as, as we think there, there's an opportunity to. And so yeah. what happens is you, you participate in, in sports that aren't tracked with steps or with kind of traditional pedometer type capabilities, and then you'll have a miss that you do of an epic mountain biking session or surfing session. You go back and sync your data, and it just doesn't at all, it's not consistent with that feeling that you have that you had a really, really active session doing you know, the sport that you love the most. Yeah. So the running that you do to prepare for it, the you know, swimming that you do to prepare for it, that probably got tracked pretty well, but you know, the time that you actually get to the mountain to go snowboarding the six times a year that you do, the things that you want to track the most, because those are like the ethos of you as an athlete, it just the existing products miss that. And so with Lit, we're really focused on contextualizing more than step-based activities. And yeah. to do that, we have to understand, obviously, steps and strokes and paddles and those types of core activities, but also jumps and G-forces and rotations and spins and all the things that make more action-oriented sports really fun and you know really exciting for people to participate in. We should cover, this is not coming out until later this year, right? Correct, yeah. We're shipping to an early group of beta, beta participants in November, yeah. and then we'll be preparing for a commercial launch you know, in retail, et cetera, in the early spring this year. Very cool. So next year, it's about six months away. Exactly. And it's going to cost around $100? Yep. The target price right now is 99 bucks, depending on how many features we add and what tech we need in that in that package. And it's going to be in a package that you wear on the wrist? Yeah. So this is just prototyping. So we wear this you know, all the time as we're gathering our own data and doing our own activities, doing testing. Richard's got some stories on the testing here. Yeah. Um, and this is just kind of a protective package and protects it from static electricity. But it'll be a wrist form factor this module. Uh, totally waterproof to 110 meters, et cetera, so that it's intended for the sports that action sports athletes participate in and people that love these sports participate in. Uh, but it can be worn on the wrist in, a, in like a wristwatch type device, or you can take the module out and stick it in your pocket, or you know, there's a wide variety of modalities. I'm so. trying to call this range of things the personal cloud because you're going to wear soon shirts that have sensors in them, shoes that are going to have sensors in them, things on your wrist that have sensors, things on your face that have sensors, right? Right, exactly. And I call it, all these things are going to hook together through low energy Bluetooth, right? Exactly. You yep. probably have a Bluetooth radio on here, right? I do, yep. So we're using BLE that talks to the smartphone, and that's the primary communication method. Um, we'll leverage then the GPS and other tech that the phone has, and it keeps us with a longer battery life on the device itself. Yeah. And this is design, designed to be broken away from the phone, because if you're going scuba diving, uh, or surfing, you don't want to take your phone out there, right? Yeah, it's completely independent. And so yeah. one of our key design tenants is to make it totally passive. So you never have to actively do anything to the device. It's always tracking your activity. Uh, 200 times a second, we look at what activity you're doing, classify it, and then group those together in an active session. And so you can just go about your day, go about your week, when you're ready to open up the Lit app and sync, it will actually read all the data, contextualize it into distinct sessions, and then provide the highlights, the most exciting things that you did that can you know, push into your social connection, whether it's Facebook or Path, et cetera. So. We should talk about what it's really doing, because you're one of the few people who uh, is trying to contextualize what I'm doing. In other words, sense whether I'm skiing or running or surfing or you know, no, exactly. Do you want to not, cover right? that? Yeah. So, the, can you tell us how sure. you do that? Because that's pretty interesting. Right? Yeah. So, the technology we wanted, we wanted to build was something that could you could just put it on, forget about it, and it's going to, like Michael said, track everything you did during the day. And 
So what, what it does down at the, at the base level is like 200 times a second, we're, we're monitoring the sensors, we're looking for the markers that we have, that we, where we train. We use, we use machine learning to train the system on, on what type of, what an, what an activity type is, or what the data looks for that type of activity, what the profile is, and then, we, and then in those types of activities, we contextualize it and the algorithm actually adapts to, to like what should be the most important uh, activity yeah. to track, or you know, if it's airtime, or if it's paddles, or if it's something else. Can you easily update it to do more as you figure out more ways to contextualize? Because right. you guys can t test seven contexts right now? Yeah, right now we're at six key, six. Act key activity types that what we are can they, contextualize. Buddy? It's surf, skate, snow, and that's snowboarding, snow skiing, uh, moto, and mountain biking, and BMX. Oh, very cool. So you can't really tell uh, what would be a context you can't tell, you know? Like, Parkour would be great. We get all kinds of emails about yeah. doing parkour or doing wakeboarding. We actually went out and did our first uh, wakeboarding session with uh, some friends down in, in the Carlsbad Lagoon. Um, but uh, it didn't, uh, you know, and we can do it. We know we can do it. We saw the data, we can do it, but it takes manpower and it takes this, this significant yeah. amount of effort. Uh, we have so regression tests that we run every single time we do a new session. And so, so you're watching the pattern. So if I'm on a mountain bike, I'm shaking like this. Yeah. You and we, know that pattern is probably on a mountain bike or on a bike of some kind. And right? we look at also how you move, how you turn. Yeah. So we're we're looking at everything, including like we recreate your motion into a 3D vector, and then we map that over time. And and a lot based on that, based on where it's being worn and and what what we see in the data, we create a contextualization. Yeah. The the other element I think of that that's really important is. Everybody's styles are different, so I might be a very different mountain biker than Richard, and we built the tech package so that it interprets what you're doing yeah. and creates a feedback loop so that my mountain biking session, I confirm that by confirming that it retrains the algorithms that, okay, this is Michael doing mountain biking, yeah. you know, and so it doesn't interpret me as motocross, for instance. You guys are just watching the sensor data, right? Correct. Whether I'm shaking or turning or whatever, or having, undergoing big G, you know. Right. Uh, G moments, yep. G moments. You're not hooking up, so Google is looking at context the other way, which is looking at your calendar. Oh, he's in a meeting. Uh, we probably think that's a meeting context, right? Right. Uh, and then we'll verify it by, it, are you looking at two eyes, you know? <laughs> Something like that, right? That's really, yeah, you that's know, cool. Right, or... Uh, We're doing it the opposite direction. We're coming at it the other way. Totally through the sensor. Yeah. Are you thinking of how to use, you know, how to use your sensor-based context and then hook it up to, the Gmail yeah. and the other, uh, you know, the other context that you're going to get off of uh, yeah, we, our pattern in life. Yeah, we wanted to, and, and the pattern in life is like people are creatures of habit, and we really rely on that with our personalized contextualization engine. Yeah. So, um, but um, so people do the same, you know, they tend to do the same kinds of activities, and that that helps our algorithms out a lot. Because like like Google's going to know I'm going to enter the beta breakers race, right? Because yeah. I did a search. And data breakers, found calendar. the website, clicked on the website, and then I yeah. bought a ticket, the ticket got emailed to me in email, and Google Gmail. knows so much about. They know everything, right? They know everything <laughs> about what, what you're doing, and that's a different kind of contextualization, but yeah. we, do, we do take hints from different things, like your GPS. We, our core experience doesn't require GPS, but when you, ha when you have it on, when, you, when you're tracking something that works really well with GPS, like snowboarding does, a lot of people use it there, mountain biking does, bicycling, all, a lot of those do. Many don't, so you know we didn't want to make yeah. that a core requirement to every to the experience. But when you do, we take hints from that and, and other stuff that we where, can find. Where I'm going with that is, I think in five five years or so, we're going to be wearing a lot of devices, not just Google Glass and a Nike thing. Thank you, because we agree. Right? Yeah. But we might have two or three different contextualizers that are contextualizing yeah. based on different data calendar points, based, right? motion yeah, based. Yeah, like I might have a Google. Google's going to have a contextual OS at some point in the glass, and then I'm going to wear your thing on my wrist yep. or here, and it's going to add We're in. seeing high G moments, you must be motocross. And yeah. By the way, your calendar didn't say that, you must have sneaked out to go to motocross. <laughs> yeah, You're going to all know when I'm having sex, that's no, all. You, we, won't, we won't talk <laughs> about G that. High G moments, so, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's go, let's hope they're high G moments. So. We know everything. Which gets to privacy, right? Because people are like, what? <laughs> yeah. Wait a sec, oh, you could tell I'm having sex because you know, a oh, certain okay. pattern in life, we can figure that out, right? If we can help your sex life, you know, that, there's no better sales than that, so. But, but how, how, oh, what's your, your company approach to privacy? Because you're going to know I'm doing certain things at certain times. 
maybe my boss isn't supposed to know I'm surfing today. Right? Google has to worry about <laughs> privacy. Yeah. We fortunately, we're not at the point where we have to worry about privacy yet, but you know, we will. You're, you're only holding the data here on the yeah. hardware. Right. Are you putting it on the cloud anywhere? Are you yeah, doing we do. anything? Yeah, I mean, in fact, the entire contextualization happens on the cloud where where we can like, we have the, band, the bandwidth and the CPU power to like take advantage of all the hints that we get and everything. Yeah. And we'd love to connect with with Google's APIs when they have that that part ready. Yeah. It'll make everything we're doing smarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, right now, you it, are you yet another data silo then? Because one thing that's a problem in this personal cloud industry is like the Nike doesn't talk to this uh, right. fatigue science thing. Yeah. This this thing doesn't talk to the basis watch, and the basis watch right. doesn't talk to the Javon, and the Javon doesn't talk to this, and yeah, no. the GoPro cameras I'm using okay. don't talk to anything. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. We're not ready to like make official company statement, but we don't want to be a silo. We no, but you guys APIs. are innovators, yeah. and that, you're going to be around for a decade. Thank you. You yeah. know, and this whole industry is going to be built over the next five, five or so years, right? So, the way you guys think will tell me how the industry will yeah. evolve. If you're all into we, we think the it data, can, it can't be a silo. It won't work if, if everybody's a silo. So we have to break out of that, and and we're we're making we put infrastructure in place to be able to do that. And the time isn't quite right yet, and, but we have yeah. inquiries all the time and we're, we're starting to look at them. Yeah. I'm going to show you the app. Yeah, so let's see the app. The, the app is, um, you know, we've, we've taken a lot, of, a lot of people have been exploring and investing in, uh, in building these kinds of apps. So, you know, up at the top we have the, the score that you, um, that you got for the day. And, you know, we have some markers in there, like, you know, when you've done something really cool, it'll show up in there. I can't see, oh, I can't, uh, sorry. He was in the way, sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure you were up on stage. So right. the other thing, though, that was really important to our audience and to us was to, to bring the feed right into the main screen. So this is the main screen. Nothing's more important than how you're doing today, how you're doing towards your goal, yeah. and then your feed. Like, how did my buddy do? How, how did I do? So we can go, we can scroll here through the feed, and you know, we have the different types of activities that we've done. Sometimes it's just sleeping, sometimes it's walking. But you know, here it was last Friday when, when we were doing the uh, wakeboarding session yeah. at, at the lagoon. Uh, here was a run Michael did. Um, that was a short one. There's another wakeboarding session. Here's here's a mountain biking session. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I, you know, several of my friends are wearing five of these devices, yeah. and they're all giving different readings. Very true. How do we know which one's accurate? You know, is, are you, you know, guys uh, study, I, studying to make sure yeah. that the accuracy we, level? So we, up there? We're normally wearing. I'm wearing a Shine right now because I just got it. But we're always kind of testing, you know, what is most accurate relative to, you know, for us, it's really the spirit of how you feel after you participate. Yeah. We're not just tracking running and walking, we're tracking these kind of epic sports that you do. Yeah. And so, are we consistent? Is the score consistent? Are the metrics consistent with that feeling that you have when you're done? Yeah. And I think, you know, it's kind of subjective, but until we have more of a consistent level playing field on some of the yeah. data, you know, it's really matching that essence with the consumer, so. Have you found uh, the best place on the body to, to actually study these kind of patterns is it on your head because your head is very steady cam and very uh, it's you know yeah. your body wants to protect your head from right. wacky stuff right we're on yeah. my on my arms up flailing and the surf and stuff like that yeah so there's uh, it depends on the sport so for every sport we have a recommended place to wear it and uh, we do a lot of our tracking on the on the hip so we want huh. people to put it in their pocket and wear it like that because it's really easy and it fits most of the sports um, but other sports, it's really better to wear it on your wrist, like surfing, and and it depends on what so you, you want to track. So you can study the paddles. paddles. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's when you see a signature for a really good surf session, you'll be amazed at the kind of data that you see. But, you know, one of our buddies gets 5,000 paddles every time he goes out there. And that's like by and far the, the thing he wants to see in the data, and it's just it's just really cool to see, and it's it's a shareable digital moment. And we yeah. created the moment with our, with our technology, and, and that's kind of what makes it so can fun. Can you see how many waves he's caught? That's something we're working on. Yeah. If you wear it on your wrist, it gets a little bit harder. But so you have to kind of pick what the you know the tech, the, the kind of tracking you want to do. Yeah. But um, but there are things like because you know, like the guys who surf Mavericks have to paddle a lot more exactly. per wave, so you know you get oh, yeah. some of that. that exactly. Kind of stuff if you're too. doing the if you're doing the California Southern California waves, um, it's the waves are like 30 feet tall and it's. It's not a lot of data in those waves. Yeah. But there's the Mavericks waves. Yeah, we uh, we need to get somebody out there testing for us. Do you, can you tell how fast I'm going? Because you're not really studying GPS here, are you? 
There's no, like, just on the phone. So in but the phone's in the car on a surf session. For surfing, so. exactly. So we we not in this version. Or we don't even have GPS. Skiing, I usually don't take the phone, right? Yeah. We, in in most yeah. of our activities, people bring their phone, and we can leverage yeah. GPS, and that gets you speed and vertical and climb and those types of things. But there are some sports where the purpose is to get away. You know? yeah. and so lit is there, unlike any other product, capturing the essence of your surf session or skiing if you don't happen to bring your phone on you, et cetera. So. Um, you know, I, I, I have the Oakley ski yep. goggles with the Recon Instruments uh, uh, display. Yep, as and a display. computing pa package, and they watch speed and hang time and some of the same stuff you guys are. Are you thinking of make it, making uh, business deals with, with, with companies like that so that when you add on your package, it'll give more data into my screen? Yeah, the, I think the most interesting sure. for us is like when you're looking at other media sources. So being able to incorporate in with footage that you take when you're doing these activities, because we can do that really, really well when you take footage on the phone right now, but being able to take footage from an action sports camera, et cetera, yeah, and like then overlay GoPro. our data or help you look at, you know, within your 40 gigabytes of data that you collected, where are the two highlights? Because we can tell you where the highlights were based yeah. on G-Force, airtime, those type of attributes that are collected by Lit. So, yeah. you know, anything that can help our consumer have an overall better experience, and that's certainly one. It solves a you know, immediate need they have with another product, and also adds to the overall kind of efficiency of, of Lit as a product and their lifestyle is really important for us. So. Yeah. You guys are, because you're a startup, you have to start somewhere, you understand action sports context. Are you going to, are you thinking of growing out of that after after you take over the action sports world? I mean, uh, and, we would love to. I mean, that's and the, start studying when I'm shopping or <laughs> eating with my wife or something. You know, yeah, because the, the, there will be other contexts that are studied. I I have a feeling Google wants some of those because if they know I'm going on a date night, they want to put a recommendation exactly. in the class for where to go and I, stuff like that. I mean, that. I think that the I think the real like beauty of the technology we built is that is not like the you know the specific stuff we did for action sports but that we found a way to auto blog for people and yeah. like we found that you know for this sport it happens to be really easy and it fits the, the kind of sensors that everybody's using in these products we have some specific ones but it, it's a great fit for the technology and and yet it's like you know the data comes out so clean it comes out so so uh, it's highlighted you know but the the technology that we built that we think the, the real secret sauce behind the company is just being able to auto blog for people. Is how, figure out what they did in the day that's the most interesting thing, and automatically be able to digitize that moment. And uh, and that, we think that it applies to other other areas as soon as the sensor technologies keep you know. Mm -hmm. Since your first uh, customer is a pro, is a sort of pro athlete or enthusiast, yeah. so, somebody who's really it's not an just, enthusiast, not a pro. Well, you know, it, but to go to go to this level, you're. You've flown by the Nike fuel van, right? And because right. you want to go even more data, you know. Yeah. And so you're going to get the advanced, advanced amateur or the pro or the, the person who really, really cares about sports. Um, are you are you looking at where was I going to go with that? You know, are you looking at an at a quantified self kind of uh, log because yes. the, you know if you're running marathons, for instance, you want to track everything you put in your body how much sleep you got, and so you're probably having a bedded sleep sensor, or a, this yeah. is a sleep sensor, all it does is watch sleep, you know? And so you probably want to start hooking these things into a feed, so when you have a really good day, you can look at, what did I do for the last week that was different? Right. And how do I do that again for the big race or the big wave contest or whatnot, right? Yeah, and that's that's a key part. I mean, we, we want to create a profile for everybody, and uh, Especially when you talk about like the amateur, the you know the semi-pro, like just a step beyond the enthusiast. There's there's a company that we really like called Hook It that that they're out there based by us, and, and, we, and we like the idea by partnering with them to get because they've got the profile for the athlete. They know their social patterns, everything like that. And we have this, we create this profile for the for the athlete or the user that is how many hours they put in surfing, how many yeah. hours, how many, I mean, we'd like to know how many calories they. And it's not like how little calories, but how many calories. <laughs> you know, yeah. And that's that's kind of what defines these athletes, and we're tracking all that, and we create a profile for people. Yeah. One, one of the interesting things too is that, like, the, the people that are in, most interested aren't necessarily the aspiring pros. They just they just love the sports that they do, yeah. and they're interested in quantified self. They're probably techie in general, and the existing products they just don't translate the athleticism what they do. So it's yeah. someone that goes snowboarding 50 times a year that bought a fuel band but realized the fuel band didn't capture the essence of snowboarding. Yeah. Or someone that loves to mountain bike and it wasn't a product that would translate like the athleticism or that big jump that they had or yeah. that crash that they had. 
they're not, you know, they're not trying to go on the tour for mountain biking. They're investment bankers or consultants or you know, yep. young people that are just excited about tech and they're really interested in, in information and their digital experience. But lit speaks to them because it translates the athleticism of the things that they love. And that's another element of like just lifestyle sports in general. I mean, people that snowboard, they, they'll tell you they're a snowboarder before they'll tell you they're a venture capitalist. Or you look at profiles of like VCs that are here that like to surf, it's in their little Twitter feed that they're a surfer, yeah. you know? And it's, they probably do it twice a year, but yeah. these are, like, there's an affinity around surfing and the surfer lifestyle, and it's oh, who yeah. they connect themselves with. And that's, you know, that's the kind of ideal target for Lit, just because these are people that are, they want to tell the world, but they don't want to be so vain that they've got a GoPro on, you know, taking yeah. pictures of them all the time. And Lit's in the background, giving them a diary of, look, you know, I should have been at work at 8 a.m., but by the way, I was at Maverick surfing because I'm a badass surfer. And I worked during, you know, worked my tail off during the week doing all those other things. How so, are you guys funded? Uh, we've been totally self-funded to date, so we've wow. had some success in the past. How, how much have you guys invested in building this? About five hundred thousand between the founding team. Five hundred thousand. Wow. So, still thinly wow. funded. So no, but Richard pretty... had to go to a dentist to get his arm fixed because we don't have medical insurance yet. But <laughs> that'll be the yeah, story for a lower. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Pictures at the dentist. That's right. I could talk to you guys all day long because you're in an interesting space and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how this world hooks up. Yeah, exactly. The personal cloud space is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, yeah. It's key stuff. Uh, where do I learn more about it? So, nzlabs.com. Um, we'll be shipping, and we've got a few orders still yet for November shipment of early beta samplers. Um, and then beyond that, it'll be hopefully in stores near you in 2014 and beyond. So. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, out. Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. We appreciate well. it. So, this is what we're doing all uh, the next two or two and a half days at TechCrunch Disrupt. We're seeing all sorts of cool personal cloud innovators. So we think this is really a, a big deal of wearables and sensors and uh, big data. It's going to matter and it's going to change our lives. And we're going to hear more about it uh, probably in a, about another half an hour. Thank you for joining us. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage from TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 shall continue in a moment. Build your cloud to fit your application. Find out more at rackspace.com.